Let's start with that Obamacare case, because California's a named, uh, named party in the case. Uh, were you encouraged the way many were by the questioning from the bench indicating they're not going to strike the whole thing down? So, Dave, thanks for having me. And uh, absolutely, we were uh, guardedly optimistic after hearing uh, the questions and uh, the comments from the justices. Uh, I, you know, at the end of the day, they're human. They, they recognize that lives are at stake with regard to the Affordable Care Act. If you strip it away and if you do it based on this one provision dealing with the what's called the individual mandate, uh, if you use that one little entry point to try to say that the entire uh, law is infected and must go, you're going to hit millions of Americans, millions of Americans who probably wouldn't be alive today without the Affordable Care Act, millions of Americans who, who lost their jobs, and with that, their health insurance, who today have coverage because of the Affordable Care Act. Affordable Care Act is not the only issue uh, between a number of states, including yours, and the federal government under President Trump. Uh, you've sued him a fair number of times. I will say you've won a fair number of times. When uh, President Biden takes office January 20, do those lawsuits go away involving things like dreamers, involving immigration, all that range of issues? So 106 times the state of California has caught uh, Donald Trump red-handed breaking the law, and we've had to sue him. Uh, unfortunately, not all of those lawsuits will go away simply because you have a change in administration. But many of them can be resolved fa fairly quickly, some not as quickly. Some have other uh, parties in the action, so it's not just the federal government and the state coming to terms. Uh, you, you need to make sure that it's resolved completely. So fortunately, some will. Others, we're going to keep at it. Are there some actions that the Trump administration has taken that, that, that basically the Biden administration cannot simply wave a magic wand and make go away? I mean, for example, notice and comment rulemaking. You can't just make it go away because you don't like it. You have to go through it again, as I understand it. So are some things that may well last into a Biden administration? Well, and, and here, David, the important point is the Biden administration can't behave the way the Trump administration did. The Trump administration was sloppy and impatient in trying to make changes to law. And that's why they lost so many times to the state of California. Uh, the Biden administration can try to uh, reverse course and take us back to the future again uh, in, in some of the policies, but they still have to go through the rules. They have to follow procedures. And so if they, if they try to do it in a way that would be like the Trump administration, sloppy and impatient, they're going to have the same problem. So uh, I, I have a feeling that this uh, new president coming in, Joe Biden, understands these things, and he'll have a team that does them right. Do you have hopes for the dreamers at this point, something that they, they tried to do a deal with under President Trump, couldn't get there? And would you favor something that actually uh, took care of the dreamers at the same time, had something like E-Verify included in it? So, David, what I'm about to say probably is, has the support and concurrence of about 85, 90 percent of Americans, and that is that the dreamers are home. This is their home. This will be their permanent home. It's just a matter of the politics finally catching up to, to the sentiment of the public and the reality of where we are. So we need to get a change in the law to make their permanency, you know, safe uh, without the anxiety. Uh, we, in California, we sued we won against the Trump administration. The, the program is still in place, the DACA program, but we need a change in the law. That requires Congress and the president. Uh, Joe Biden has said that within his first 100 days, he's going to propose a fix to our broken immigration. I think Joe Biden exactly how to get that bipartisan support. Uh, one of the things that has been uh, percolating has been uh, antitrust and big tech. And I don't want to talk about the lawsuit that's been filed. That's under sub judice, as they say. So we can't talk about that. But more broadly, uh, do you think that the Biden administration would be open to some sort of curtailing or regulating of big tech? Uh, without a doubt, I think all of us are looking closer. At the end of the day, we all want competition, right? But here's the thing, that Competition is essential if you want innovation. If you want to spur an economy, and California is all about spurring its economy, that's how we came, became the economic engine for the country, you need innovation. And so you cannot stifle innovation. But what you don't want is, under the guise of innovation, that you have these behemoths who uh, are born and, and just take over everything. And so what we want to do is make sure that we continue to see the tech industry just really blossom in the United States. But at the same time, it's blossoming because there's competition driving that innovation. And so AGs have taken the lead in saying, we want to see innovation, but we need to see the competition that, that really brings that innovation. 
One of the issues that has really divided the states in the Trump administration was auto emissions, and particularly California, uh, where essentially, as I understand it, the Trump administration said, you can't have your own rules in California. It's got to be our rules nationwide. What happens to that now under a Biden administration? Well, let me frame it this way, David. This is 2020, not 1920. That's what this fight is all about. Clean car standards. It's not something unachievable. It's not some kind of Jetson kind of car mentality that you can't go there with our vehicles. We've proven, not just in California, the nation, that you can produce cleaner burning cars that are safe and people want to buy. And the Trump administration took the 1920 approach saying, no, we got to go back to the old days where they can let them pollute so they can sell them. No. So my sense is with the Biden administration, we're going to move forward. But again, you got to do it the right way. And we'll get back into the 21st century. You got to go in this direction. For California, it's not a choice. It's a necessity. We cannot afford to pollute our air more than it already is. Uh, if I can put it this way, you've played a fair amount of defense over the last four years. Let's go over to offense. If you have a Biden administration that wants to work with you on some things to do, what would you like to work affirmatively with the federal government on? Well, I think we just touched on one, and that is moving fast and aggressively when it comes to climate change. We have lost four years, and Mother Nature doesn't wait. Uh, and so we have to catch up because... It is time, and California is proof. These wildfires that we're experiencing in California, that is not normal. The floods that the South is experiencing, not normal. Hurricanes where you run out of letters in the alphabet to name all the hurricanes in the East Coast, that's not normal. And these super tornadoes in the Midwest, none of that's normal. Got to tackle climate change. Secondly, it's time we settle this immigration issue so that we know who's who really has a right to be in the country? Who doesn't? Let's have an orderly process, not a mean process. You need to have carrots and you need to have sticks. But Donald Trump was using not sticks. He was using bludgeoning uh, hammers, and that's just not the way you do it. The other thing I'd say is criminal justice reform. I think we all have a sense that we need to do something. The system isn't as broken as some would like us to think, but there are bad apples, and there are there is some embedded bias, and we need to deal with that. I believe... Joe Biden is ready for this. The, the level of experience he has and the commitment he demonstrated in the campaign, I, I think a president, Joe Biden, is going to really launch this country. So uh, I'm, I, I'm struck by the fact that you're lacking a senator come January 20, because we're going to have Kamala Harris is now the vice president of the United States. There's a, there's a seat open there. Do you have any thoughts on who might fill that? And could they be named Becerra by any chance? Well, first, uh, you got to name Harris. Uh, Kamala Harris has done a phenomenal job, not just for the state of California, but now we, she's going to show just for this country. And I think for those of us from California, we're just tickled and proud that uh, she is now going to be at the center stage as that you know the dynamic duo for for the country with uh, Joe Biden. And so we wish Kamala Harris nothing but the best because she can give us the best. And in terms of that Senate seat. You know, the interesting thing here, David, is that California has a lot of very talented people. Governor Newsom's got a tough decision. It's his call completely. Where he goes, I think we're all going to be really happy. Gavin Newsom breaks ground. Mm -hmm. Gavin Newsom takes California further into the 21st century. So I think we're all going to be very happy wherever he goes.